yeah, man, you know what? I'm here to let y'all know Luka Doncic is the GOAT. Luka Doncic is already the GOAT. A 20 years old man, I mean, his true shooting percentage for the first two months in a season for someone under 21, between 6'6 and 6'9, is the highest we've ever seen. You see what I'm getting at. You see what I'm getting at, right? Like, look, man, Luca's dope. He's fun to watch. He's amazing. He's putting up all these numbers. Let's not get carried away here. Like, let's not get carried away with uh, how, you know, putting him, like, just putting him with these historical, and, I, and my, my, I'm being sarcastic here because ESPN has become infamous for just creating stats, right? If you can create any kind of the first player to do anything in the third quarter, you know, with a shaved head, it's, it's ridiculous. Luke is amazing, man. He's amazing, but let's pump the brakes. We ha he hasn't even played in a playoffs yet. He doesn't really play defense, so slow down with the 20-year-old LeBron, 20-year-old Luka stuff. I also would point out the three ball wasn't nearly as prolific when LeBron was a rookie, so those numbers, they're skewed, just like every other, every other star player's numbers right now because of the three ball offensively, right? But I think the question with Dallas, I had brought this up before, was does Mark Jackson, does Mark, does Mark Jackson, I, I got something about Mark Jackson later though, but uh, does Mark Cuban go and get a third guy? Are they going to go and get a third guy, right? And, I, and, and I went, I'm thinking about the, look, I'm not saying that the Luca LeBron, the Luca LeBron comparisons are there. And here's what I want to point out. There's so much there. That it got me to thinking people are a little down on on Kristaps, KP, and, you know, his 18-month layoff. He doesn't have his confidence. He's not getting to the line. He's off in the corner, not in a lot of pick-and-roll ball action, right? And it got me to thinking, like, hey, is Kristaps the new Chris Bosh, right? Is he the new Chris Bosh? Because Luka is the next LeBron, right? And so... They Luca, Luca and LeBron, they're very similar in the sense, and you're seeing these triple doubles and these monster numbers, but they're, they do everything. They're so ball dominant. Their usage is so high. If you're a star player, are you kind of relegated to being a super role player? So you saw it with Chris Bosh in Miami. You saw it with Kevin Love in Cleveland, right? Is Porzingis Luca's first victim? Of, of from star player to role player because you know look and part I don't want to put it all on that because I think Porzingis does lack confidence and he isn't got it's going to take him half the season to get his rhythm and confidence probably but I just want to throw that out there that if this is the, this is the closest thing we've seen to LeBron you look at the past and it hasn't always been easy to pair a star with LeBron because he does everything, and he has the ball so much because he's so good. Is that is that not the same model that you're going to see in Dallas? So before you go say, oh, go get them Kevin Love, or, you know, hey, Kevin Love could be Kevin Love. But, uh, <laughs> but my point is, is that I don't know how easy it'll be to pair another tier one star with Luka because Luka does so much. And a lot of their players already have kind of fit that mold so if you're if you're building if you're constructing a team around Luka a championship team much like you did a young LeBron what do you need right you need three and D wings you need a catch and shoot point guard prop with ideally with some size a stretch big and then maybe a rim roller I will say I think the difference between a young Luca and LeBron, I mean there are diff there's there's more than this obviously on the defensive end too, but I think that Luca doesn't mind having a rim roller and he hits the guy on the roll more and pick and roll action where LeBron, a young LeBron, he just wanted to clear out and put it on your head, right? And Luca can't do that, but so he operates in the pick and roll and he's willing to he like he likes a, a vertical spacer more than a young LeBron. And so you look at Dallas's who who do we have here? I'm looking at who do you have there with Dallas? So Maxi Kleba, right? Is are these guys stretch guys? Powell, they're trying to turn into a stretch guy, right? But I think Seth Curry fits that. Tim Hardaway Jr. seems to be buying in. I don't know. We'll, we'll see, right? So you've got some of these role guys that are catch and shoot guys that don't need the ball, but are they good enough at that caliber? I think Seth Curry. You saw him explode uh, last night in Mexico, and uh, I think he is. But you know, some of these guys are unproven. And you look at their bench, it's by committee, right? It's by committee, Dallas's bench. 
and, and their scoring. I think the question is, that's all well and good in the regular season, but we all know depth doesn't matter as much in the playoffs. And if some of these young guys, Brunson, and I'm not saying they're not, they they look like they're, they, like they're solid guys, but they're no show in the playoffs you really going to have J.J. Barea out there trying to carry, you know, the second unit? You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I think that they have the right, for the most part, the right type of guys around uh, Luka. I just don't know if they're the high enough caliber of those role players. And uh, we'll see how, you know, how much better KP gets. So when you talk about adding to this team, Dallas clearly a playoff team now um, with the way Luka's, you know, performing in the MVP race. But so I got in the trade machine with them as well, and I'm looking around. I think the ideal guy, you know, you know, uh, Mark loves his his Europeans, his foreigners, is is Bertans in Washington, right? But you know, to me, I say like, why in the world would Washington give him up? They're having fun doing what they do out there. They got him on a bargain. I always he always struck fear into me in San Antonio. The Warriors played San Antonio. How many times early in the playoffs the last three or four seasons? And he was a dude that I always was concerned about. And I and then they didn't use him as much, right? He's a he's a modern big, and you're seeing Washington's just uncorked him. That would be an ideal fit, right, next to Luca and adding another weapon, another guy that can score. I just don't see why they'd give him up on the deal they got him at unless you're giving them a real asset back. And the problem is Dallas doesn't have any true assets. They've got some draft picks. And some expiring contracts. That's the trouble. Uh, Mark Markeith Morris is it Markeith or Marcus? Whichever the ones in New York, the better one. Um, what did he drop? Like he, he looked like KD the other night in, in at the Chase Center. That was nuts. But I think a lot of teams are going to be calling about him, right? And who knows what New York's going to do? And I, I don't know if New York, frankly, would be willing to deal with Dallas again after the Dennis Smith Jr. Porzingis deal. Dennis Smith Jr. ain't even playing, man. So they, that shit's looking that shit's looking bad for them. I think a more realistic player that they could add to the mix maybe would be a J.J. Redick. And again, you're building a team around Luka like you would LeBron, a catch-and-shoot specialist. He doesn't bring the D, but you know what I'm saying? All those dribble handoffs and stuff like that. So maybe him for an expiring contract if New Orleans decides to blow this up. They may try to hang on and see what it looks like with Zion this year. I've been winning so long, it's like 